Hey guys, welcome to Trade Bins. My name is Kritesh, and in this video, we are going to discuss how to perform the TCF analysis. Now, this video is basically focused for the beginners, and we are not going to cover all the details. We will just understand the basic procedure that is, how TCF basically works. In the next video, we will perform the TCF analysis for a publicly registered Indian company so that you can have a better idea. But in this video, we will just understand the basics. Now, what is DCF analysis? DCF analysis is used to find the intrinsic or true value of a company. The fundamental analysts believe that every stock has a true intrinsic value. And if you buy the stock below their true intrinsic value, it can be really for profitable for you. So let's say there is a company A. Now, as you already know that stock market is dynamic. So its share price will keep on fluctuating. Let's say today its price is rupees 100 and uh, let's say today's price is 100 uh, after three months its price may go to rupees 120 and after six months its price may fall to rupees 80. so the thing here is that the prior, the market price keeps on changing however if you know what is the true value of a company you might be able to buy it when it's when it is trading at a discount so let's say by calculation you found out that the true intrinsic value of the company is rupees 100 so whenever that stock is trading below 100 that is after let's say after six months is trading at rupees 80 then it's a good opportunity for you to buy that stock because it may be trading at a discount at that time now the thing is many people believe that dcf analysis is very difficult and uh, it's not for everyone maybe only finance or commerce can guide on to it but in actual it is not so dcf analysis is a really simple approach and anyone can perform it Yes, there are a few assumptions and you have to find some inputs like free cash flow, discount rate, growth rate, terminal rate. But uh, with little experience and practice, you can get familiar with how to perform the DCF analysis. Now in this video, we will do a basic DCF analysis and we will just understand it with the help of a simple example. Uh, as I already said, we will perform an in-depth analysis of DCF in the next video. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel. and. Uh, Stay tuned for the next one. So what is DCF? What DCF does that forecast the cash flow of a company to the future and discounts it to the present value to find out what it's true worth, what it's intrinsic value. Yeah, I know it sounds a little difficult, but in actual, if you understand how it works, it's really simple. So let's move into the Excel sheet and I'll teach you how you can find the DCF of a company. So the first thing that you will require is the free cash flow FCF of a company. So how to find cash flow? It's really simple. It is equal to the net operating profit of a company minus its capital expenditures. So by the time being, just assume a number, let's say 100 it's, is its cash flow for the next five years, year one, year two, year three, year four, year five. So for the next five years, cash flow of a company is rupees hundred. So it's generating hundred crore each year. So you might be thinking that if we add all the hundred crores for the next five years, that may be the true value of the company. But in actual, it is not so. This is because there's a concept called time value of money, which means that a rupee in hand today is more worth than the rupee that you will get in tomorrow. So let's say I give you an option whether you want rupees 1 crore today or you want rupees 1 crore in after one year. What would you choose? Uh, I think most value, most of the people will choose rupees 100 crore today only because if you get 1 crore rupees today, you can invest it today. And even if you get a saving interest of 3.5 or 4%, still you will get 4 lakh additional. And let's say if you if you invest in some other investments like mutual funds or stock market, you might be able to get a return of even say 15% or 20%. So it's always good to choose. Uh, it's always safe to say that money in hand today is better than money in hand tomorrow. So all these cash flows that you will be getting in the year after the end of year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, these are not equal. So let me explain it further. Let's say for this is the present value. PV present value is rupees hundred, and you are getting a return rate of ten percent. So the next year it will turn out to be hundred 
into 1 plus 0.1 if 10 percent is the return rate so next year your future value will be 110 rupees so you can say that 110 crore is not equal to 100 crore because so next year if you'll be getting 110 crore then it can be said that you will have a 100 crore of uh, present value so this this present value and future value is equal if you have a discount rate of 10 percent so always keep this in this in mind that here you are using this rate at 10 percent uh, now the thing is that discount rate varies i mean there are different formulas to find discount rate but in general this can be treated as the return that you want so if you are investing in a riskier stock riskier company then you want a higher discount rate and let's say if you are investing in safe stocks you want a safer or little conservative stock discount rate uh, it's the same funda higher is higher the return so all these all these cash flows from the future are not equivalent and you have to discount all these cash flows to its present values these are the future values of the company this is the this one future value and you have to discount all these to the present value now one more thing like here we are finding the value for the only five year so let's make another assumption that at the end of the fifth year company sell all its assets and just shuts, uh, shuts down its business so after selling all assets let's say it makes uh, rupees 500 crore so at the end of the five and five years this will be the total cash flow of the company and the final year it will be around 600 this will be the total cash flow now we need to find the discount rate because here we have to discount this to the present value these are the future values of the company this is the future value in the fifth year but we have to convert it to the present value how much it is worth today so here we can use a discount factor and it's same like if you want 10 percent return rate you can use 10 percent as discount factor so it will be equal to 1 plus 0.1 So this is the discount factor similarly for the next year uh, you have to take it as one plus point one to the power two because this is the second year i mean uh, ten percent on the first year and the ten percent on the second year so it will add up so this will get, this will compound so the next year it will turn out to be the discount factor of 1.21 third year similarly you can take as one plus point one to the power three and similarly four year you can take a fourth year you can take as one plus point one to the power four and similarly fifth year you can take the discount factor as one plus point one to the power five now here point one is the discount rate as i already said you can even take higher discount rate point uh, point one is like ten percent you can take fifteen percent twenty percent whichever is the return rate you want now when you divide the discount factor by the future value this is the future value of the company you will get the present value pv of all this company so it will turn out to be 100 divided by this discount factor so 100 crore tomorrow is equal to 90 crore today similarly if you just drag all the these you will get that 100 crore on the second year is equal to 82 crore today Similarly, 100 crore in the third year equal to 75. Similarly, all those fifth year uh, 600 crores that you are getting in the fifth year, it's equivalent to 372 crores right now. So these are the net present values of the company. So if you add all these up, this will give you the total value of the company. Now, a few other things that you want to understand here is that these are for both the equity holders and the debt holders. So here you have to first let's say if you if the company has some debt, uh, let's say now the company has a debt of around 100 crore, then you have to just subtract those 100 crore and let's say at this time, present time, that is year zero, it has some cash of 50 crores. So you have to add that 50 crore. So this will give you you the total total value of the company this plus cash minus the debt so this is the total value of the company that will be turned out 
and let's say the total number of shares outstanding share of a company is 100 100 crores so we have to assume every digit in crores so we can directly divide it uh, here total number of outstanding shares is equal to 100 crore so when you divide this 639 by its total number of outstanding share this will give you the total true intrinsic value per share so here we can say that 6.39 rupees is the true intrinsic value of a company so if a company is trading at a price above 6.39 it can be considered as overvalue and if the company is trading below 6.39 then it is undervalued and it can be bought so this is the how a simple DCF analysis works. You have to find out the cash flows of the next 5 to 10 years and then you have to discount, find a discount rate, I mean which, how much return rate you want. Like here we assumed 10%, you can assume higher discount rate like 15% or 12%, whatever you want. And once you have a discount factor, you have to convert all these future values to the present value. So these all are the present value. And then you have to add all the present value. This and then you have to add the cash and cash equivalents like total cash and total debts then this will give you the total intrinsic value of the firm at that moment at the year zero now few things to notice here that i have made this uh, calculation very simple however it might be little complex for example i have assumed that for the all five years the company is going to make just 100 crores each year but in actual it might not be so i mean in the next five years the company may be going at a rate of 10, 12 or 15 percent. So the cash flow might be going to increase. So let's say the cash flow increased to 120 crores in the second year and third year it increased to 140 crores. Similarly, fourth year it increased to 160 crores. So these cash flows are going to increase. So here you need to find the growth rate. I mean, at what rate the company is growing. So it can grow at 5 percent, 10 percent or whatever rate. So this can be found using the by seeing the past results of the company like how the EPS is going over time, net profit is going down over time or you can just read the annual report of the company. Generally in every annual report the company's CEO or management announces that like in the next 5 years they are going to expect a growth of 5%, 10%. So you have to find out how much is the growth rate of the company. Second is this terminal value. So we already assume that at the end of the fifth year it is going to sell everything. On contrary, it may often happen that the company will continue to work for next 50 or over 100 years. So there are different approaches to find the terminal value which we are going to be discuss in next video. And similarly all this debt and cash you need to look into the balance sheet of the company so to find out what is the net total debt of the company or total cash of the company. However, this is basically DCF work, so if you understood all the inputs, you can calculate everything by yourself. That's all for this video. I hope you have enjoyed the video. If it, is, it was useful to you, please give a thumbs up. And if you have any doubt, uh, just comment below. Uh, in the next video, we will use the DCF analysis, discounted cash flow analysis to find the intrinsic value of an actual company in India. That's all. Thank you for watching.